In this video, we're going to learn how to make a laser beam, and then at the end, we'll make a script that sets your health to zero if you touch it. In order to make this, we're going to learn about collision boxes, beams, and basic scripting. So first things first, let's add the blaster model to our scene. You can add this same blaster model to your scene by searching laser beam blaster in the toolbox. Now that we have a blaster, our first step is to make a collision box. A collision box is used to detect when players collide with something. In this example, we're going to set up collision detection using an invisible block and place it around our laser so that we'll know when it looks like a player touches the laser, when in reality, they'll actually be touching the collision box. We'll need to know this information later to know when to trigger damage to the player's health. To make a collision box, insert a block part into Laser Beam Blaster, select the part and rename it Collision Box. Then make sure the part is anchored so that the physics system doesn't move the part when the experience starts. This will let your laser stay in the air. Next, move your part to extend from the blaster emitter's bulb and scale it to the length you want your laser beam to be. This won't actually determine the length of your laser, it's just the space that'll damage players if they touch it. When you're done, select Collision Box in the Explorer and set its transparency property to 1 to turn it invisible. Now that we have the collision box, it's time to use beams to make the part of the laser that we actually see. To make a laser, we need to use a beam object, but in order to use a beam object, we need two attachments. Attachments define points and orientation between certain things, and since beams operate by rendering a texture between attachments, if you don't have attachments for the beam to reference, it won't work. To set up your two attachments, in the Model tab, make sure Constraint Detail is selected, and set it to 2.5. This will make the attachments easier to see. Then, in the Explorer window, click the plus icon next to Collision Box part and add an attachment. Do this twice. Rename them to Start Attachment and End Attachment. You'll see why in a minute. Move Start Attachment to the edge of Collision Box that overlaps with the emitter bulb, and End Attachment to the other end of Collision Box. The distance between these two attachments will be how long your laser is. Remember, if you move the attachments beyond the bounds of Collision Box, nothing will happen when a player touches it. With our attachment set up, now we can get to work on our beam. In the Explorer window, click the plus icon next to the invisible Collision Box and add a beam. Remember those attachments we renamed? In the Beam's Property window, set Attachment 0 to Start Attachment and Attachment 1 to End Attachment. Clearly naming your attachments makes this step super easy. Great! So now you have a laser, only it looks kind of bad. That's because it's using the beam's default texture. Because beams render a texture between two attachments, you can use any texture you want to customize how your beam looks. In the beam's property window, go to the texture field and put in a new Roblox asset ID. I'm going to put in the one that's in the description. Much better. That's more laser-like already. From here, you can customize your beam as you like. Here's all the customization settings being used in this example. You can pause and copy them if you want to. For an even more comprehensive list of customizable options, check out the Beams article. It's in the description too. Now that your laser actually looks like a laser, it's time to make it dangerous by writing a script to unalive players if they touch it. Add a script to Laser Beam Blaster by clicking the plus button and typing script, and open it. The completed script is in the link in the description, so we're just going to paste it in now and explain it line by line. The first part of the script accesses the parent of our script, the laser beam blaster model, and saves it as a variable laser trap. Then we find the collision box in our scene and make a variable for it, which lets us access it later in the script. This is so that we can check if anything touches it. Because our collision box is surrounding our laser, if something touches the collision box, it means it'll look like they're touching the laser. The second section is all about the onTouch function, which we want to run when anything touches the collision box. Another name for this type of function is an event handler, because it handles events that occur when an experience is running. In this example, the event is when something touches the collision box. The onTouch function receives a parameter, that in this example is called other part. This is the thing that's touching the collision box. To check if other part is a player doing the touching, we see if other part is associated with a humanoid object, which is a unique object that every player character has by default. We do this in the same way we found the collision box. We start by accessing the parent property of other part. If a player touches the collision box, the parent of other part, in this case, the individual body part that touches the collision box, will always be a character model that contains a humanoid object. We then check to see if that's true by making sure the humanoid object actually exists, and then if it does, we access its health property and set it to zero. Now that we have our event handler, which is what we want to have happen in response to an event, we need to connect that response to the actual event itself. We do this connecting by using the touched event, which tells the Roblox engine to execute the function when something touches the collision box. And that's all there is to it. Playtest your experience and run into the laser to see it all come together. Thanks for watching! We hope you found that helpful. For more resources and tutorials to help bring your vision to life on Roblox, be sure to check out the resources in the description.